Do yeah. you know that term, Ali Ali Oxen Free? I've heard Show it. Show of hands, Ali Ali Oxen Free. Okay, everybody oh, here. Okay. But half the time people are like, what is that at all? Is it a detergent? If you've been tagged out in a game of hide and go seek or tag, you'd say Ali Ali Oxen Free once the game is done and you're going to reset and then everyone can come in for free. I am Adam Hines. Uh, I am his cousin. People typically don't believe because we look so different. <laughs> I'm Adam's cousin. My name is Sean Krenkel. I uh, am the co-founder of the studio. I remember the first day they told me that they're cousins and I laughed at them because you could not find two more different personalities. <laughs> I don't know how they're related. I guess the first thing I did was I made a big comic book a couple of years ago called Duncan the Wonder Dog. His book uh, sold out of its first pressing, got a great write-up in the New York Times, I think, right? Pretending he's not listening, yes. it's fine. And that did well enough um, that I was able to kind of weasel my way into the video game industry. So I actually moved from LA to San Francisco uh, to work at Telltale Games. Sean and I, for a while, had just wanted to start our own thing and kind of had, had been talking about it. Literally for like a decade about how we could end up working together and couldn't really ever figure it out or find the right yeah. time. Um, and that was the perfect time, one, because I got laid off, so that was good. <laughs> and I needed to get off my ass and either start a company or find another gig. And it just so happened at that time we had a pretty specific idea that we wanted to, um, to create or deliver. And it was really this concept of how can players interact with stories in ways that other studios aren't letting them do it. So that's the, the beginning of Night School. What's so um, special about this place? The island was a military fort. That um, it's a tourist trap for morons who want to buy Christmas ornaments of World War II crap. Sean actually took me out to lunch and kind of pitched me on the idea before any of this had really come together. And his original pitch, to his credit, was, hey, let's try to make a walking talking game. And like, it is exactly what he pitched. Nobody's done it yet, why not do it? Because every other game you get to walk into a trigger and then you wait for people to talk to you and then you move on and they feel very separate those experiences so we thought what an interesting challenge like try to yeah. have it be all around that. We said let's take calculated risks basically. We wanted to get a, a small team together and make the game really sing based on being well written, well acted, looking beautiful and sounding awesome. I wouldn't have it any other way now like I love it um, but I personally did not realize how crazy it would be running a company. I don't know how Sean does it. He, he seems to have so many things to do all the time. It's unrelenting. Sean is like the most high energy person I think I've ever worked for in my life. Like he comes in and he's like, I didn't sleep. I got a kid at home. I've been sick the past week. Let's do this. And you're like, what is going on? So I have a three year old too. <laughs> So like those two things at the same time are insane, but very similar. I'm not saying you guys are three-year-olds, I'm just <laughs> saying. At this company where there's, you know, four people and then you have some contractors and that's it, there's no one to pick up your slack at all. <laughs> so people aren't gonna be able to wipe their butts in that little bathroom unless we're getting that toilet paper in here. And which by the way, sorry crew, if there's no toilet paper, I think there is, I hope there is. So you all moved in? Uh, no, not really. Well, if your room's close to Alex's, you should be careful since she snores like a truck. You wouldn't think it to look at her, but it's like a chainsaw fighting a pack of wolves. Can we just stop talking about this? Sean and I really liked the promise of the story of a coming-of-age tale that you can kind of choose how you come of age. So we thought it would just be fun to play in that space and see what would come out of having a very oftentimes benign tale of these kids just going to party on, on a beach, but then resting on top of that just supernatural madness and insanity and kind of more gamey systems that you would want to play with and pull with. But having the real core story just be about this 17-year-old girl who um, is just dealing with a lot of stuff in her life right now. The actual story itself of the game really turns into Alex's story. You can kind of define how she is going to ingest and expel that <laughs> when she becomes whoever she's going to be become. Everyone, this is Jonas, Alex's new stepbrother from... I already forgot where. Yeah, he's cool, so be nice. So I never really tried to write for a like high school tone of voice. I just always wanted them to be intelligent, complex, complete, surprising characters. And I didn't really think, like, what would a teenager say? There's so many just great interactions with all of them. And 
so much delicious awkwardness. <laughs> hey, what's the... Ow. <laughs> Writing an adventure game, an interactive story of this nature, is definitely half writing and half mathematical problem. We never take control away from you. We never put you in a cutscene. We never stop the player so that they feel like they're just watching a TV show. So the script ended up being 1,200 pages long. We got a bit unwieldy there <laughs> just because of all the different scenarios that you can find yourself in and change. More fancy things. Ooh. Look at that. This game's complicated. The first day I came in, Adam was like, all right, let's get this in the game, and just puts down like a 100-page script. Adam just cranks out content. Probably at least once a week, I find a line in the game that A, I didn't know existed, and we're, I've been playing this game like 100 times now. <laughs> the fact that he has built essentially this entire eight-hour multiple branching game in his head and on the page is... I, I will never understand how he does that, it's amazing. Like just for comparison's sake, a Telltale game, uh, we would count it in lines, and a typical Telltale game is like 2,000 lines, and this game had 12,000. So it had quite a bit, quite a bit much more. <laughs> Jonas, where are you? Sean and I, at the beginning, we would always say, oh, it's like Goonies or Stand By Me meets Poltergeist. We always wanted to hit that tone of it's a big mystery at the beginning and it's fun and then it gets scarier and scarier and weirder and weirder and the stakes get raised and raised as you go along. Um, does it hurt? We tried to make sure that anything we've put out ever doesn't overpromise what this game is. Like we didn't have people doing wire work with two pistols flying off of the ceiling or something. Like everything people have seen is the game and that's how you play it and we're not overpromising. I think it's been awesome in that the biggest challenge that I've wanted to give the team is just make the best work you've ever made. Make the coolest game possible. Like he's just so pro like creativity. His bottom line is he wants the best thing. Yeah this team can make. I think that's what equaled to a lot of late nights is that we just were so excited about the stuff we were coming up with, we just had to get it in, no matter how long it took. Just make the thing that doesn't exist yet that you would just hope it did because you just want to play it. Why would that... The hell? The first time we put a trailer out, totally randomly, I guess Robert saw the trailer and said, wow, look at what these guys are doing. And I'm paraphrasing Robert because I wasn't there at the moment. Um, but, and it looks amazing and beautiful. No, he was basically just saying like, this totally looks like it should fit in our umbrella. It's like the perfect relationship. I hate everything I do, <laughs> but I'm surprised at how much I am satisfied with the finished product of this, really. January 15th. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> it's more of a Monday. Like if this whole place were literally on fire right now and you guys were on actual fire, he'd be like, be the universe, baby, like it just is what it is. <laughs> like it's just, roll with it. Yeah, yeah. that's so how happens. he is with everything. What happens, happens.